Hello Paper Crafters, I'm Sunny Sky and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I want to show you a set that I got from the Spring Occasions catalog. It's here on page 36. So with the bookcase builder set, you really can do highlight several different rooms with your cards. This one is a traditional library or living room with plants and books. And then I have a baby room. And this is a little girl's room because I've done this on pink pirouette cardstock so that it's just a little bit of hint of color on the painted walls of that baby room. And you'll see that there's kind of an arc on this piece of cardstock that's stamped. I've created some dimension between the front window and the wall in the center, but then on the side I put that dimensional behind the cardstock that's painted. So it's sort of arced and curved there. And then on this card we've done the man cave, the master study, with the trophy and the antlers. And now we're going to do another one today. Okay, so here's the cardstock you'll need for this project. You're going to need a scrap piece, and in this case I'm using soft suede for the uh, window frame. And then also for this piece that's going to be the main part of my card that we're going to emboss with the brick template. You need the piece that's going to show up behind the window. So that's this very vanilla piece. It's two and a half by three and a quarters, and it's just small enough so that it sits inside the window. And you need your full card scored in half. And so that is out of the very vanilla. The very first thing I'm going to do is cut in the big shot this window die. Because when I stamp on the insert that's going to appear behind that, I like to have that window handy so I can see where my shelf is going to be, where the items are going to be, because those window frame um, lines are going to go through there, so you don't want to interrupt your picture too much with that. With this particular die on my particular machine, I do like to run it back twice, just because it has a little bit of problem getting some of these little bits. And it may be that be my plates are older and have been used quite a bit. But there's my die. And then we'll use this as we're getting ready to stamp. Also in the big shot, we're taking our other piece of cardstock. This is the one that is our full card, the layer right in front of the full card, and putting that in the uh, embossing folder. And just set it on the tab that your machine says to emboss rather than to cut. And run that through, and that's also in soft suede, just like the window frame that we just cut out. And so there's our embossed folder. Okay, so now I have my small piece of very vanilla cardstock. I have my window frame that I've cut. Actually, let me just take the cardstock. You really could use the die as your template too. But I'm just setting this cardstock next to my window frame so I can just sort of see how everything is going to line up. And I'm going to use crumb cake. This is a little bit lighter than the soft suede that we've, this is the soft suede paper, and so we're going to have a crumb cake um, bookshelf on here. And I'm going to put this one up just, I'm going to hang some stuff below it. We're going to do a banner on this one, so I'm going to put it right below the seam of the window. And that way we're going to be able to see it through the window, because I'm going to do this banner on it. And I'm going to also put a uh, bookshelf up that's sort of off-centered that's up higher on the window that shows through the window there. So that again is using the crumb cake. And then we have this banner stamp. And we're going to use some of our in colors, the Emerald Envy, and create this little banner here. Now this banner stamp comes with two stamps. This one has four flags and then there's the other one that has three flags. And we're going to use the stamp -a jig to make sure we get our banner lined up well. This is the stamp -a jig You have this guiding tool and you have a piece of plastic that you use with it. I've marked on mine, let me see, stamp -a jig this side down. Okay, so that helps me remember which way it goes. There is a rough side. The rough side is going to go towards your cardstock and that's going to keep it from slipping quite as much. The smooth side is the side you're going to stamp on and that's going to help it um, to clean it off really easily because it's smooth. So there's a couple steps when you use a stamp -a jig You're using this corner. I'm left-handed so I use it this way. If you're right-handed, 
you're probably going to use it this way. Um, but whatever way is convenient for you, you can turn it this way. But this plastic sheet, which is thicker than a piece of our acetate, is going to butt right up in the corner of this purple tool. And then you take your stamp, mount it on your block. It doesn't matter how it's mounted on the block, but you're going to put that block right in the corner of that tool and press straight down. And you end up stamping on that clear sheet. Then you see the image through the sheet and you can line it up wherever you want it to be. Hold this still, hold it still against your cardstock, put your stamp made jig tool down again, hold that still. You're going to remove this, re-ink your stamp again. In the meantime, your tool and your cardstock are staying stationary. Butt this block up back against, because remember it's mounted on the block so it's staying in the same position as long as you use that guide. Then when you stamp it, it lines up perfectly. Isn't that neat? Now a lot of times I don't use this because I just eyeball it. I'm not too concerned with it being super uh, matchy on most of my things. Um, but it comes in very handy. It also comes in handy if you stamp part of a, an image and you missed part of it, you didn't ink up part of it. You can use the stamp -a jig along with the imaging sheet to stamp again. Now once you've got this, if you're making multiples of the same card, this is you don't have to re-stamp on this sheet over and over because that's going to stay stationary. You can line it up again if we say that we wanted another banner over here. We can, in fact, let's do that. Let's do another banner. So let me come back with the green again, and I know that's going to kind of butt up to the edge of the shelf. And then let me line up the blue. And of course part of our banner is going off of our card, and that's fine. We're just looking into the window of someone's home, so we're not going to see everything in there. Line this block up against the purple stamp on my jig again. Lift straight up, and you've got it lined up. Look at that. Doesn't that look so handy? So in our card here, we've got our banners, but you know, before there was a welcome home party or a congratulations party or anything, there were items in this room. So I'm going to put a little pot up here. And you see I didn't use the stamp on my jig, so it's not quite on the shelf. So I am going to use the stamp on my jig for the plants that go in the pot, and I don't even have to clean this off yet. I can simply just choose a different corner with my stamp and my jig and I'm just going to put the block in the corner again and just line up this plant with the pot put down my tool, remove my imaging sheet put my block back in the corner and stamp and I'm just using the Emerald Envy that we used on the banner to just kind of coordinate some of the colors there and then I have this stamp here that's got three bottles and uh, I want to use my markers because if you have got a stamp where you want to use multiple colors on the same stamp you can always use your markers to color in ink it up you are gonna have a lot of color in this room but you know if you've got some old bottles they come in lots of different colors I'm just putting the marker on with the lightest color first and then going to the darker colors And then if it takes you a little while to marker on them, then if you just huff on the stamp, that'll moisten it up again. And I'm going to stamp it on my scrap just because it's the first time that I've inked this stamp today and you see it didn't get the greatest color. Sometimes that happens when your stamp, the first time you use it, uh, this actually is my first time in this set using a stamp, so it really is a brand new stamp. Sometimes the color doesn't stick to the photopolymer the best, uh, that ink and stamping and stamping off once will help just sort of condition it a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to stamp our I'm just breathing heavy on that to add some moisture back in there. Stamp those right on that shelf and there's those bottles. Look, they've got a little bit of uh, texture in them still, but that kind of gives it uh, that antique look. Let's see how it looks with the window over top of it. There we go. You can kind of see inside the home here. There's a few little speckles from this die, which we can just pull off, get out of our way. Now, time for putting this all together. We're using our adhesive foam strips. 
These are really handy. I love the dimensionals. Don't really need the extra depth that these have from the dimensionals, but it's a quick way to do the uh, the depth on this card because I'm just going to do a long strip on either side of the card. And if I were using dimensionals, I'd have to get five or six. So this is a quick way to add that space. All right, and then I want to do it on the front. I'm actually going to do it on the back of this die cut here. Just a couple of small pieces of the foam. Because remember I said that we're going to arc this image just a little bit. Just makes the wall, gives the wall a little curve. Just gives it a little, I know a wall wouldn't normally curve, but it just gives it a little extra dimension for this card. Okay, so because I'm giving this dimension, I'm just going to put some fast fuse, which is my super strong adhesive, in the center of this image. And I'm going to mount it on my textured backdrop that I created. And when I mount it, I'm just going to push it so that that center goes down first. Because I want to make sure that gets dimension before I add those sides. I don't want it to get, have it have not enough space. And then I'm going to use my liquid glue. This is as I'm lining this up just to get adhesive. There's not really a wide enough rim around this to put my snail adhesive or fast fuse on the sides of that. So I'm just using liquid glue. It also gives me a little bit of play if I don't get it on quite straight. There's not a bottom or a top to this. It's the same both ways. So you can do it either way and just make sure that you can slide it up and down. See how you need it. Just pressing down on the edges there and in the centers where I've got my little foam. So you can see that where I've got the uh, foam in there that it's kind of creating a little raised edge on there. And then we've just got the full card to go on the layer on the full card here. And there's lots of things that you could add to this brick coating on the outside wall to highlight a little more, but I just wanted to be kind of subtle this time. And then let's get our saying, and I'm going to use that congratulations. It comes in here. Let's see if my I'll use the back of this. Oh, and if you these uh, photopolymer stamps, if you just set them down and then put your block on top, that'll help you just make sure that they're actually have whatever form of straightness they were designed to be, rather than accidentally squiggling them a little bit. And I'm just using the back side of the block where I built my bookshelf. And we'll just do this. I thought we'd use the Emerald NB again since we've got it in the plant. There we go. Alright, fairly straight. So there's that card. So I hope you enjoyed that. And this really is a fun set to play with the bookcase builder. I've enjoyed doing all these varied cards with it. Um, I've got our little party card, our library, man cave, and the baby's room. So thanks for joining me today. Now go have some fun crafting.